So this is a review of how we add and subtract vectors and how that applies to both one-dimensional and two-dimensional vectors. So if we look in one dimension, if this is our number line, this is the zero point, and we have these tick marks, and we have some vector we'll call x1. Let's say that equals to i hat. So if we draw our vector x1, it will start at the origin and it will go until it reaches two tick marks. Now, if we have another vector, let's say, x3 or x2 and let's say that has a length of three now again we would draw our vector starting from the origin and going all the way until we reach three tick marks. Okay. So if we wanted to add Let's call it x3 equals x1 plus x2. In mathematical form, it would just be two hi hat plus three I had, and that would leave you with five I had. So if you drew that vector, you would start from the origin and it would point towards five. like this. So that's what it looks like mathematically. And now let's show that graphically. So our vectors are still the same. So x1 is still 2 in the i hat direction. And x2 is still 3 in the i hat direction. So we'll draw our number line again. This dot is the origin. So if we wanted to add these vectors in a graphical way, and we're doing x1 plus x2, you'll draw your first vector starting from the origin. So that would look like this. And then we'll take our second vector and instead of starting from the origin, we'll start at the tip of the first vector. So 
start here and count three tick marks. So one, two, three. And now the result of this addition x3, you start from the origin and then you draw your line to where the second vector ended. And so in black, we have the vector x3. And that's the same vector that we drew uh, when we were doing it with numbers and mathematically. So graphically and mathematically, they are consistent. So in one dimension, that might be straightforward, but now let's look at two dimensions. So two dimensions now. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw a grid like this. Okay, so this will be the x direction and this will be the y direction. If I have a vector, call it x1, and we'll say that's three i hat. Maybe I'll do a different color. And then we have, and so we can draw that vector. And then we have another vector y1 called, and we'll say that length is four in the j hat direction. So that goes up to four. And let's say that we wanted to add, call it S1 equals X1 plus Y1. Okay, so now let's do it graphically first. So if we take our Maybe I'll redraw this grid and we'll just look at the first quadrant. We draw our first vector in the sum, which was three i, so we go over three. And there's our first vector. And now if we follow the same rule as before for adding things graphically, we'll take the second vector and start drawing it from the end of the first vector. So we'll start here and go up four. And that that vector. And then to get the vector s, which is the result of the sum of these two vectors, we draw starting from the origin to the end of the second vector in the addition, and that's our vector s. Okay, so s we look at its x and y components, it is three i hat plus four j hat, right? Because to draw this arrow, we have to go to the right three and go up four. So what this is telling us mathematically is that uh, when you, so, your x 
vector was three i hat. Your y vector was four j hat. And then we can't add these two things together because x and y directions are two separate things. So instead of adding them together, you just leave the i's to themselves and the j's to themselves. And that gives you a two dimensional vector with sides uh, with x component three and y component four. Okay, so that's. This is one way to represent a two-dimensional vector using its i and j components. Now let's look at another way. So this was our vector s and it had lengths or it had x component of three and a y component of four. So I drew this in this manner because you should see that this is a right triangle. And so because this is a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of the S side of this uh, triangle. So S would be the square root of three squared plus four squared. So that's nine plus 16, which is 25. And the square root of 25 is five. And so what we just found is the magnitude of this vector. So this would be read as the magnitude of the vector S. Okay. Now, another thing that we can use this triangle for is to find, for example, this angle theta. So if we use our trig functions. We have the opposite and the adjacent side. So we're going to use tangent. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. And then Solving for theta, we get theta equals tangent inverse of four over three. If you plug that into your calculator, then you'll get about 53 degrees. And so we've seen this component form of showing a vector. The other thing that you can do is say that this vector has a magnitude of five and an angle theta that is 53, 53 degrees above the positive x axis. And so there's going to be some problems where they give you a magnitude and an angle, and you'll have to break that into components, or you'll be given these two components and you might have to find the magnitude and the angle. Okay, so that was one example. So now let's look at another example. Okay, so again, this is the X and the Y direction. Now let's call this vector x1 
and this vector x2. Okay, so if I write the components of x1, it is 2i hat, because it goes to the right, and then minus 2j hat, because it goes down. So you, you might see it written uh, like this with uh, a comma in between them, or this is the same as having the plus sign in between them. Then for the vector x2, here we go to the left too, so that's negative two i hat. And then we go down two, so that's negative two j hat. So now if I want the vector s to be x1 plus x2, if I write this in component form, I would have 2i hat plus negative 2j hat plus negative 2i hat plus negative 2j hat. Now to add these different components together, we're gonna to use a, uh, a mathematical rule similar to this one. So if you had two vectors A and B, you're not really allowed to add them together. If you had 2A plus 3B or 3A, then you could add those together and get 5a. But you can't add a's and b's together. If you had 2a plus 3b plus a plus b, then what you do is you group all the a's together. So 2a plus a, and then you group all the b's together, 3b plus b, and then you can add those together. So we're gonna do the same thing for these i hats and j hats. So two i hat minus two i hat would give you zero i hat. And then negative two j hat and negative two j hat gives you negative four j hat. And so if we draw that vector, it would look like this. So starting from the origin and going straight down until we get to the fourth tick mark. Okay, so now let's do that example again, but we'll do it graphically. And I'll only look at the, the lower half of the the bottom two quadrants, so. Okay. So our x1 vector like this. And then we put our, so this was our x2 vector. So now we're gonna pick it up and move it so that the we start at the tail or at the end of the first vector and then draw until we reach the end of the second vector and then your resulting vector you start from the origin and draw until the end of the second vector in the sum and you get the same result as you do mathematically. Oh, what were these vectors called? Oops. I guess I called them x1, x2. OK, 
Okay, so now we can again find the magnitude of this vector. So it only has one length, which is four. So if you squared that and take the square root, you would just get four. So the magnitude of that vector is four. And then to figure out the angle, you, since there isn't really a triangle to work with, you just have to say start from the x-axis and then figure out how many degrees you need to rotate to get to s. So you could say theta is negative 90 degrees or, or 90 degrees below than the positive x-axis. Okay, so that was just a couple of examples of how we add vectors together. And then uh, once you have a vector, how you can find the magnitude of that vector. In a future lesson, we'll start with the magnitude and the angle and then show how to get the components and then uh, what to do with those components in two-dimensional motion.